Now before we talk about the absolute BS that Omar caused our boy to more or less lose his land in the coming days or months, we have to talk about the discount Thorfinn that we got to experience in this episode. We know how many years Poor Leaf has been looking for Thorfinn. Even after how everything ended with them, he's still looking for a slave named Thorfinn. And the fact that he's now traveling with what you would basically get if you ordered a Wish version of Thorfinn. If you went to Wish.com, you typed in what you're looking for, the image looks pretty damn identical. You're like, how am I going to get a figure that is this high quality for $19.99, free shipping included? And when you get it, it's basically a stick held together with someone's used gum. That's more or less what Leaf is traveling with. But bless his heart, he's like, hey, does he have this hair? Oh, he does. He has the same name. He's a slave. He came from this place. This might be my boy. But he's going to such lengths to find Thorfinn, and it warms your heart. Though, it does feel like the name's similar enough, which is probably why Einar never brought up the fact that there was a dude looking for a Thorfinn. Because the fact that immediately when he calls out the fact that, hey, you have someone named Thorfinn, he doesn't immediately assume it's him. Meaning that he's most likely found other Thorfins, and obviously it wasn't his boy. But what an interesting uh, discount wish version that ended up butting heads with the worst son ever, Omar, who he's never going to see battle in the way he thinks, and either is going to get himself killed or his father's lands completely captured for military use. So Canute is a pretty scummy bastard these days, but man is he an effective ruler, and that's pretty much what this time period breeds. Now, I do have a full live reaction available on my Patreon if you're interested in seeing my full uncut thoughts as I watch the episode for the first time, so if you're interested, head on over there and consider supporting. But this was a pretty great episode. It was actually a lot more humorous than I was expecting with a lot of the goofy mannerisms coming from the characters. You basically have a king who's looking at it as I have this giant army that I can't downsize and all the funds from one section of my kingdom that I'm ruling from one country is all going to power that. I can't downsize and if I raise taxes there will probably be people up in arms and I mean for a boy that's already scared about his sister potentially poisoning him and killing him I mean, it's no wonder why he's fearful of an uprising of general civilians. So basically we need to capture land that's completely ours for profit. And when you look at the fact that King Harold had this pretty good deal going on with Keto in this whole situation, he gives him gifts, and more or less he gets to kind of keep his own little island, his own little section of the world, and he gets to profit from it with the idea that should something bad happen, King Harold would obviously help him and protect him. Right now, it seems like everything at face value is going to work out identical, meaning that, you know, the the brother is going to keep with this promise. And then you have Omar, who, in the most cringy fashion possible, his war cry sounded like he stubbed his toe and somehow twisted his ankle and dislocated it. He had to carve a pig to show him his strength, and he just, he couldn't cut through the bone, and he just kept swinging and swinging. And as a warrior, he's the first to die on a battlefield. But the fact that they're looking at him as a way to get the father's land, it's going to be very bad. Now, my assumption is going to be something along the lines of he's going to use him and he's going to make such a big blunder and it's going to be purpose, like like purposeful. They're going to put him in a situation that's going to cause such a ruckus, a political turmoil is going to occur, and it's going to be a justified reason of potentially why you can now have your father's land. If they don't go that direction, I assume they're going to manipulate the son in taking the land for himself, maybe overthrowing the father, I don't know exactly. But no matter what, we know the first farm on the chopping block is the farm where Thorfinn and Einar are one moment away from freedom. And with Thorfinn turning over a new outlook of denouncing war and violence, I'm very interested because if we rewind the intro to this season, I more or less said, I expect at some point war will come to their doorsteps, whether that's Canute or another force. What is a boy who's now denouncing war, who's pushing away the concept of violence? Is he really going to be able to get through a king like Canute at this point? History doesn't mean jack all. So what's going to happen? I really don't know. I do expect he's going to commit to his no violence rule, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see what the first true taste will do to his mindset of since denouncing it and having the first true sense of happiness ripped away from him. Is he going to be able to be saved before war comes to the doorstep? I mean... We obviously know our boys trying, you know, it's a it's a short little ride, five days there, five days back. Wait a second, ten days, that's not a short trip whatsoever. But I like how for an episode that's basically summed down to as a king sits, ponders how to screw over the big guy in the grand scheme of things for the little guy. I mean, someone who has a farm full of slaves and is wealthy is a pretty large player. 
if you look at it from a peasant's point of view, but in the grand picture of a king's worldview, it's just an ant that can be squashed if you need to, and that's basically how Canute's looking at it. But I love what Farland Saga in Season 2 has done, because Vinland Saga has always been bigger than just action scenes. While Season 1 had a lot of really exhilarating action scenes, and they were fun to follow, the core heart and theme of what made the show pop to begin with was the character arcs, and watching especially a boy go from such a normal, yes, wanting to be a warrior, into such a mindless, emotionless killer and how it broke his psyche and how he developed a father figure in Asklad and how it just changed his worldview and how the politics of everything worked. I mean, it's always been a political series first and foremost. We're just now really in the thick of it. And if you compare where Canute started in Season 1 to where he is now in Season 2, hell, if we even rewind a little bit earlier into Season 2, he just looks and feels like such a different character and that nothing is beneath him. He can do whatever it needs. If he has to kill a brother, if he has to kill a sister to do something that he thinks is beneficial for the grand vision of what he sees as paradise, he'll do it. It's interesting. This is, and I'm not trying to claim this is my thought. This is like a pretty common thought process in the Vinland Saga community. If you look at both Thorfinn and Canute, they more or less have the same goal but they're basically doing it in two very different ways. Canoe is doing whatever it takes through violent, political, stomp your foes to get to what he views the world to be as this perfect place, and Thorfinn wants to do the exact same thing, but through denouncing war and stopping wars and trying to use dialogue at this point. And to see how the roles have been reversed since season one, it's so interesting to see how far the characters have come, and depending on your opinion, how far characters have fallen since Season 1. Yes, it's the time period, and that's what makes it realistic, but it doesn't change the fact that it's supposed to make you feel uneasy and not like what we're seeing, and want to root for the positive outcome, even if that positive outcome seems like a fool's dream. But if anyone deserves a fool's dream, I think Thorfinn deserves it. After everything he's been through, the role models he had to grow up with after the death of his father, I really hope he can find some way, some king, some ruler, and maybe multiple rulers, that maybe he can slowly start the change, and will start generation upon generation trying the same thing over time. Like I said, there was a lot of funny moments, I think, with Wish version Thorfinn and Olmar going at it and winding up their punches. There were some goofy moments, but I like the fact that how so casually they can bring up the fact that for someone who's been looking for Thorfinn for so many years, clearly there's a connection between these two. Oh, same name, same hair color, same physique, but a little shorter. I like how it's very much like on the nose of like, there's a reason why he's not jumping for joy immediately because he's had his heart broken before of thinking he found Thorfinn, but now everything is lining up probably the best he's ever hoped for, and the fact that it really does kind of paint a, paint a picture of why Einar never brought up the fact that someone looked for Thorfinn, because, well, the name's common enough, most likely, that it's just like, hey, you know what, I mean, I'm not gonna say, oh, some dude looked for me because you had the similar name, right? It's just something that makes sense to avoid it, even though I know there has been some comments over time of, like, why it wasn't brought up before. I think it's just simply because he didn't think of it. There's no ulterior motives or anything where he's hiding it. I think it's just because, like, hey, Leaf has met at least 12 other Thorfins in his quest of finding him, right? So... It makes total sense, but I thought this was a great episode for sure, and I'm loving what this season is doing, but let me know what you thought down below for sure. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here. Also, be sure to ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload on the channel, and of course, as I mentioned, we do have that full live reaction available on my Patreon. And while you're there, you can also get a video shoutout. So today, we have Rogue Knight, Luke, Crawley AC, Spectra, and Migs021. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.